United Methodist Church. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. My name is Kate Hanch and I am blessed to serve as one of the associate pastors here. And whether you're watching this on 8 a.m. Sunday morning or 11 p.m. on Thursday night, we are so excited you chose to worship with us today. We hope to be a community where you feel safe, welcome, and wanted where all means all. We offer a special welcome to our guests who may be worshiping with us for the first time, and we hope that you know God's love with us today. And to celebrate your presence with us today, we ask that you sign in through our app or through our website. And we got a cool app that has everything you need to know about our church. We have daily devotionals on there. We have weekly worship. We have connecting with small groups and even daily scripture readings. We hope that this app will be a blessing to you. Well, we're beginning a new message series on this Easter Sunday called Living Into the Next. And our preaching pastor for today is Reverend Dr. Bart Hildreth. And what is super exciting that we are going to be continuing with our two worship services in person and live stream. In addition to this service, which you can access anytime after 8 a.m. on Sunday morning, we have a 9 a.m. and an 11 a.m. worship service, both in person and on live stream. And this allows us to worship in ways that where we feel comfortable and where we can gather together. And now, let us continue with our confession and pardon. The season of Lent is a time of prayer, fasting, and self-examination. It symbolizes the 40 days Jesus spent in the wilderness when Jesus fasted and Satan unsuccessfully tried to tempt him. In this season, we come to terms with our individual needs for God's mercy. The candles represent the themes of Lent. Each week of Lent, we extinguish another candle, remembering how we, the human race, rejected Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Today, we proclaim the transforming power of God. This morning, we light the Christ candle because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead.
We confess that there is still pain and suffering in the world that we too often ignore. We know that in, in the pain of death, there is life. In the face of what seems overwhelming odds, God is at work in, the, in us and in the world, working for justice and peace, compassion and love. We celebrate new life, new joy, and new possibilities. Christ is risen in us, for whenever we gather in his name, he is there. Hear the good news. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. for it is life-changing, life-giving, and life-sustaining. 
We welcome the hope it brings into our world. We welcome the joy it brings. We welcome the empty tomb, for we know that it means you are on the loose. Let us have this sense of urgency as we live as a freed and forgiven people. In the joy and hope of this Easter morning, we realize the depth and breadth of what it means to be your Easter people. For we are the ones who are called to go into the places in our lives and world to work for justice and the life for all in your creation. We give thanks for our partner ministry, Volunteers in Medicine, our Mozambique Partnership and Lincoln Elementary School, and pray for them as they care for your beloved people. Remind us that it is up to us to bear witness to the promise of resurrection, to hold those in despair and grief and believe for them that love is stronger than death. It is in the name of the one who is risen from the dead we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Throughout Lent, we have been sharing about our special Easter offering, all of which, all of which, is going to our partner ministry, Volunteers in Medicine. Last week, we were this close to breaking our world record Easter offering giving. Well, my friends, we did it. We blasted that record out of the water. And you know what? God is not finished with us yet. We are so close to a challenge goal of $18,000. $18,000 translates into $360,000 worth of medical care for volunteers in medicine. $360,000 medical care for our most vulnerable neighbors. I cannot imagine what a difference it will make in their lives. But God can, and God does. To those of you who have already given, thank you for your generosity. You listened to God's nudges. But you know what? God's nudges are always with us. So whether we have already given, or trying to figure out how much to give, or maybe hadn't even thought about giving yet, we can all listen for God's nudges in our lives as we celebrate the resurrection of new life and new hope through Easter. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your generosity. And here is a video sharing more about volunteers in medicine and their amazing ministry. Well, welcome. I'm Anita Hockett. I'm the clinical director at Volunteers in Medicine. I've been here since about day one, 25 years. <laughs> well, this clinic actually started, it has some Methodist roots. <laughs> Our clinic actually started when a lady from a Faith Methodist Church mother died and she wanted to do something with $2,000. She was concerned about health care. And she talked to uh, a few other people and it, just, it started growing. And so we opened really on that $2,000. We are a primary medical home. Our patients are domestically underserved in St. Charles and Lincoln County. Our patients are treated, they're given medicine, they see very qualified, licensed people to provide their care, and they never are charged a penny for that. And then we operate, we're all volunteers, we have no paid staff. We function on donations. We get some grants, but it's donations. and. Without the donations, we can't 
open the doors and do what we do. So that's a vital part of this whole mission is the people who are willing to make the donations and care enough people in the community have been so willing to support us. Although this last year with the pa a pandemic, it's been tougher to raise the money, is, which is no surprise, but uh, it's had one of the, that's been one of the challenges that we've had. Our funds can go directly for patient care. And at the present time, every dollar that's donated does provide $20 or more in health care services. So it it's a vital um, ministry to come out of our church in many ways. Well, first thing I did was, well, I told him I, he made my day, but the first thing I did, he couldn't see me grinning, of course, but was to share with other volunteers at work here and you know it was one of those great moments of the day when hey listen to what just happened on that phone call so oh yeah <laughs> and then to share it with the other volunteers who are from our church family you know that means a lot because you know your your fa church family is supporting you Long in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with the mighty triumph on his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Use us and use our gifts 
to share hope, life, and love to all people. Help us to extend your grace and your love to everyone, today, tomorrow, and every day. Amen. scripture comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As the first day of the week was dawning, this would become a defining moment for Mary who along with the other Mary, went out to the tomb in that liminal instance, just as the new day and a new week threatened to begin. Because of it, we will forever see Mary Magdalene in light of this story as a morning person, bright and cheery, energetic even, Easter's early bird, the Madonna of the morning. But did she start out that way? She was, after all, just doing her duty. Did it feel like a drudgery? Had she had her requisite cup of coffee or other caffeine addiction of choice? If you or someone you know are distinctly not a morning person, someone whose circadian systems are still set to sleep, you know it's always a push and a pull accompanied by a great deal of mumble and grumble. Grief, too, would have slowed Mary down as it slows us all. And to journey with her today is to look back and see that we're all carrying some sadness, every last one, some burden, some death, some change of things that have passed painfully away. There are people we've loved and have lost. We could name every last one of them, and the older we get, the longer our list. There are failures that are a kind of grief. It doesn't seem to matter whether or not we bear guilt. Our unsuccesses are a sorrow we can't seem to shake. The death of dreams presses in on us, of life that hasn't turned out our way, of roads not taken, of imagined futures for which we still sit shiva, as a Jewish Mary might say. Has this past year been anywhere near what you expected or wanted? Me neither. 
all politics around him aside, it was Dr. Seuss who rightly pondered, how did it get so late so soon? It's night before it's afternoon. December is here before it's June. My goodness, how the time has flown. How did it get so late so soon? So we reminisce and reflect and with regret say, I thought we had more time. It's the song we sing as grief beats its breast, insisting that we live into the last and the burden of whatever is past. That's where we are and how we come upon Matthew's telling of this day. Now, by way of a bit of teaching, some scriptures ought to be read as if gazing on a sculpture studying each careful line and chiseled mark. Some scriptures ought to be considered as one might ponder the studied absorption of Rodin's thinker or Michelangelo's grief-laden pieta. Matthew's word instead cries out to be considered as a water-colored story splashed on the canvas of our lives in vibrant hues, exciting the senses. It comes to us from the other end of the spectrum, like a Cezanne or a Monet with his water lilies, asking us to take it all in with the ever-changing, ever-new light of day. That's my bit of teaching for how we might consider reading different scriptures in different ways. When it comes to today's passage, think about it as a bright and flowing water-colored canvas. When we do, what comes is a quickening word. As the first day of the week was dawning and suddenly there was a great earthquake. The angel's appearance was like lightning. And the angel said, He is not here for he has been raised, as he said, go quickly and tell his disciples. So they left the tomb quickly and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Easter is all about running feet and news that can't wait. Didn't you love hearing Dan and Sharon O'Donnell sing, Up from the grave he arose? I needed that, and they did a great job. Sometimes when it's sung, you'll hear a distinct modulation of tempo between the stanzas and the refrain, beginning as softly as a dirge intended to bear our grief. Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. And then almost with a shout, up from the grave he arose. With a mighty triumph o'er his foes, he arose a victor from the dark domain. And he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, he arose, he arose. Hallelujah, Christ arose. And with that note, Christians become a people no longer living in the last and burdened by the past, but living in the urgent. All this month we'll focus our messages around how we live into the next. It starts with living in the urgent. It starts with going quickly. There's an urgency to faith upon whom Easter's light has dawned, an urgency about the changes needed in our lives, about old habits that, like the gravestone, are rolled away, about sins forgiven and guilt turned to assurance, about grief transformed into an unrelenting hope, about new commitments that demand our all-in yes, and about justice 
that can't be put off. Today just so happens to be the anniversary of the death of Martin Luther King Jr. It's now been almost 60 years since he wrote his stunning indictment, particularly of clergy, but also more generally of people who look like me. It's entitled, Why We Can't Wait. A recounting of why justice delayed is justice denied. More than anything, King's book is a proclamation of Easter's claim that there is no Christian who is not urgent about all that's wrong and needs to be made right. Easter is all about running feet and news that can't wait. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if almost everyone worshiping with us online or in the sanctuary had their own stories of things that happened suddenly, unexpectedly, of news that cannot and will not wait. This is mine. It was 29 years and one month ago today that I was leading Sunday worship in our church in North Carolina. The service had started. The choir had sung. What I'm sure were pious prayers had been offered. An offering had been collected. All was going exactly as expected. That's when I saw this usher coming around the side and as quietly and as inconspicuously as he could, he slipped up front and handed me a note. It said, rather matter-of-factly, your wife is going into labor. We'll take her to the hospital and meet you there. Well, that's nice. My external reaction was all calm and collected. My internal self, however, was going bing, 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 absolutely bonkers. Somehow, both my children managed to come into this world on a Sunday, and my daughter, my second child, wasn't about to wait. I, however, was young and way more foolish in what I thought was the decorum a pastor was expected to maintain than I might at this stage of my life. What did I do? I stood up and preached like nothing had happened, like nothing was different, like nothing had changed in my world whatsoever. Come to think of it, I'm not sure what I said that day. I'm not sure the congregation could say either. As soon as I wrapped up, however, I left the pulpit, came down to the front, and calmly read the usher's message to the congregation. They cheered. I said, I think you can take it from here. And with the thundering sounds of clapping echoing in my ear, I dashed out the door. I jumped into the car and made a breathless, heart-beating beeline run for the hospital. I was in time, but barely. Whew! My daughter, Molly Catherine Hildreth, would not wait. Life can't wait. It's absolutely urgent and won't be delayed. This is the message of our Scripture. Such that in the same breathless way, we clap and cheer and say, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We are a people. No longer living in the last and burdened by the past, but living now in the urgent, this is our message. It's urgent that we share it. When new life comes, where will that take you? To whom might it take you? 
quick. God's waiting for our answer. My name is Lindsay Willard, and I'm humbled to serve as your Director of Marketing Ministry. Happy Easter, friends! Christ is risen. And as Pastor Bart reminded us, there is new life. Spring is springing up all around us, and new life comes whether we're ready or not. And maybe, just maybe, God is leading our community of faith to new life, to new ministries, to a new vision for 2021. So this week, let's spend some time in prayer together, reflecting and meditating on what new life may look like at First St. Charles in 2021. What new life does God want for our community of faith? What role will you play? And how are we sharing God's love and good news in our community and our world?
And now, as you are able, will you stand for benediction? My sisters, brothers, and friends in Christ, no longer are we living in the last, no longer burdened by the past. Christ is risen. It's a message that cannot and will not wait. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen.